All right, welcome to Super User TV. I'm Mark Collier, CEO of the OpenStack Foundation. Really excited to be back on Super User TV. And with me, I've got Alex Polvey. And what do you do? I am the CEO and founder of CoreOS. Wow, you're kind of a big deal, it seems like. I heard you did a demo Thank yesterday. You, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we did a demo yesterday. Yesterday, we showed off some of the uh, capabilities of how you can use these containers and container management systems, particularly Kubernetes, um, to deploy OpenStack mm -hmm. itself. Now, Kubernetes, isn't that like Greek or something? <laughs> I think so, Len. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, okay. Greek. Yeah, yeah, it's Greek. So. It's, it's, this is what happens when we don't rehearse. Um, right. Just throwing uh, language questions at you. So, okay, <laughs> Kubernetes, like what's, what's so special about that? I mean, I hear people talking about it. Like, what is it that's interesting about it? Sure. So, Kubernetes is this way of managing server infrastructure that involves distributed systems and containers, typically pretty focused on microservices, although any application can run in, in, in okay. Kubernetes. So, it's a, it's a cluster management system, particularly mm -hmm. meant for deploying containers. And it's built by the team at Google uh, that built Google's version of this, which is known as Borg. Okay. Um, and so, do they? Do, I mean, do they know anything about like scaling infrastructure, or is this kind of Google a Google knows a, things or okay. two, a thing or two about scaling infrastructure? Okay. Cool. Yeah, so definitely. they're they're sharing some of that knowledge through this code, right? Called this Kubernetes thing. Exactly. So, so where does OpenStack come in the picture? You did some demos yesterday, yeah. blew some minds, but like what? <laughs> What was the demo and like, I guess, you know, how does OpenStack and Kubernetes, how can they come together? Sure, so a lot of people think that these systems are at odds in some way when they actually solve different problems. Okay. So containers get compared to virtual machines a lot. What mm -hmm. they should be compared to is like RPM or DEB. These are packages, right, okay? Containers right. are just packages of applications, okay? Mm -hmm. Then, beyond that, the cluster management systems get compared to things like Nova or something when, when they should be compared to um, like Puppet or Ansible or Chef. Okay. Okay? And the, the things that a container and Puppet and Ansible and Chef do for you are application lifecycle management. Right. Okay? Now, Kubernetes at the end of the day is about managing applications. Okay? And so, OpenStack in this context is another application. Just like you can manage OpenStack with Ansible and Puppet, you can do that with Kubernetes and containers. Um, okay. The big difference between these systems is that in Kubernetes, the server decides which, or sorry, the cluster decides which server to actually run the application on. Okay. okay? In, in Puppet and Ansible, the operator encodes that into, into that, those scripts themselves. Right, so it's more of a, of a system that kind of understands that modern applications that are microservices oriented are going to live on multiple machines. Like, yeah. like it, it, the whole idea that like an, an app runs on one machine in one operating system is kind of a little bit of a, of a, a relic. It seems like right. people, it, it still happens, it still works that way at, at some low level, but as you move up the stack and think about a whole cloud and a whole cloud app, you're always going to use like a lot of different servers. Exactly. So you're sort of wanting to create a, a language, so to speak, or, or a, a system that you know speaks that language. That assumes many servers. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like m any any meaningful, uh, any meaningful application deployed on a server is going to be on more than one server. Like, right. It, so to have a system that kind of embraces that natively is, is what it does. Cool. So uh, yesterday we you called we called your demo. I don't think we even told you we're calling it Inception, but yeah. we just put it on the calendar uh, that way that. for the heck of it. See how you would handle it. <laughs> um, but so you had Kubernetes underneath for lack of a better word, and yep. OpenStack on top, because OpenStack is really just another app or a series of microservices in a way. Yep. But then there's other people that we talk to, like Live Person, that you know, they're running Kubernetes on top of OpenStack. So you have a world where you could end up having sort of like different layers and Kubernetes in different places. Is that, you think that's going to be so common? Let's go back to Google, because I think it's much easier to think about. So sure. Google has their infrastructure. I get all my all, answers from Google. So. All, all container-based infrastructure for everything. Gmail runs in containers, but also so does Google Cloud, their infrastructure as a service. Okay. Right. So if you are a customer of Google Cloud deploying Kubernetes, that does not mean you have access to Borg, the underlying system that runs Gmail. Right. right? They're different operations teams. Mm -hmm. One is the Google SREs that are on call for the production data centers at Google. Uh -huh. The other is your operations team that is in charge of the, the Kubernetes cluster you just deployed on top of Google Cloud. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's logically exactly what's happening with, with this under over thing. There's going right. to be a team that's responsible for your corporate infrastructure for running everything. Mm -hmm. One of the things that they run is the OpenStack cluster itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the customer of the OpenStack cluster are other business units or whatever that might not have access to that Kubernetes, the underlying right. platform at all. They're they don't customers even want of it. OpenStack. They don't even know it's there. Yeah. It doesn't matter. That's yeah. an irrelevant detail to them. Yeah. They just talk to, to OpenStack and get a virtual machine and run their workload on it. Right. Okay? And so that's a perfectly valid use case.
place. Now, where it gets confusing for folks is in the open source world and in smaller companies, it's typically the same people doing that base layer right. as, as the ones that are doing the, the the VM provisioning on top of Nova mm -hmm. and so on. And that's just where it gets confusing and our minds get muddled very quickly. Right. And so on. But if you look at Google and the way that they have their container platform that runs all of Google and then they have Google Cloud Platform, the infrastructure as a service, mm -hmm. and those customers are like Spotify and stuff, and they don't have access to Google's raw infrastructure at all. They have access through Google Cloud. And that, that's the analogy. It's not just yeah. the analogy, it's actually a perfect example of what we're doing here. Yeah, and I think, you know, I was talking yesterday about like what's going to be the LAMP stack of cloud and I think, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good analogy to a point, but it has limits, and I think what I really liked about your diagram that you showed yesterday, it kind of showed the Google world, is it's not really a stack, you know? There's just, it, it's more sort of service way of thinking about things. You know, they're living in a similar area where they rely on something underneath that's, that's common, but they're, you know, it's not really, things are not really on top of each other. It's just like co coexisting in an environment where, you know, it's some layer, I guess, if you, if you keep it in layers, it, it, there is some, it still works to a certain extent. You know, you've got the, the physical, and then you virtualize it, and you containerize it, and then you have other systems on top. So there are sort of layers to it, but really people are composing different things, and so right. it's not really as simple as a stack in a way. Yeah, I think, I think that there is a, maybe a data center lamp stack a little. I mean, that's what you're, you're getting yeah, to. Yeah, and like, yeah. Linux is definitely part of that. Sure. And I think that's like a clear winner. Yeah. Okay. And then there's, you I know. I think this Linux thing is going to be big. I think it's, yeah, it's really catching on. Yeah. Um, and then there's, and then there's, you know, I think a container is going to be part of it going mm -hmm. forward. You sure. need to package your application somehow, and that's part of the stack. Every piece of the application needs to be packaged somehow, okay? Mm -hmm. And so a container is a, a generic way that seems to be quite popular for, for packaging that. And then beyond that, you need some form of cluster management system in this new world, a way mm -hmm. of deploying and upgrading those containers. Right. And that's where we think Kubernetes is going to win on that piece of it. Okay. And that, so that stack. So you placed your bets. We placed our bets, and then we package it up and make it enterprise ready with Tectonic, which is literally that stack, you know? Okay. So, yeah. Like we're calling yeah. the thing tectonic. That's okay. what tectonic is at the end of the day. All right. is that we well, got to get your plug in here on Super User TV. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. I, the no, plug, no, but there isn't fine. a name. There isn't a name for it <laughs> at all. But so when customers go and take Linux and they take Kubernetes and so on, they're, they're essentially building their own tectonic. There's just no name for that stack at all. Sure, right? sure. Well, you might as well name it. We named it. Yeah. Now you also have this thing called what you call Giphy, I call Jiffy. Yeah. For this, reasons this that we we're not going to get years. into, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, yes. Yeah, so, what is the, what is that about? I mean, that's another thing you're naming. Yeah, Giphy is Google's infrastructure for everyone. Okay. And it's this model of running your data center that folks like Google and Facebook and Twitter do that is distinctly different than like how every other IT department does. Right. And and that's that's gets at the essence of what I was talking about, where you have the cluster management team that's mm -hmm. doing dynamic container-based scheduling, and then you have the application teams on top of that that consume that that infrastructure. Yeah. That so. Talking with you and, and Craig McClucky yesterday, one of the things that I, I guess I didn't fully appreciate, but it makes sense now that I think about it, is that, like you said, Google Compute Engine, their cloud service, runs inside of, or on top of, or relies on Borg, which is essentially kind of this under cloud, it's a if, if you will. Management platform. Yeah, and so it's it's like they run their cloud in a cloud, and they're in a way already. I mean, it's kind of abusing the word cloud a little bit, but that's kind of what it is, right? There's this Orchest massively parallel orchestrated system of containers on what, a million, two million servers? I don't know how many servers they have now, but I think it's well over a million. And then they said, well, with this great infrastructure, what could we do? We could build a cloud <laughs> and offer services to people. Right. So that, that kind of opened my mind a little bit to th thinking about that in terms of why would OpenStack make sense on Kubernetes? Like, well, Google's cloud, which is you know not based on OpenStack, but they built they built some software to, to offer a cloud to end users, is, is running on something like Kubernetes. So right. why not try that for OpenStack? Exactly, I mean, it's literally Giphy. We're doing like Google's infrastructure for everyone, and we're doing it with you Kubernetes. Mean we're doing it. With, we're doing it with Kubernetes and OpenStack okay. instead of Borg and Google Cloud, which is all proprietary software that Google built. Right, right. Cool, well, you know, I think open source is, is the way to go, so. I'm, I think open source is part of this new LAMP stack, for sure. Yeah, I think it so. It seems to be very popular. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you just, uh, you don't, you never know where it's going to go, but I think we're, we're, we're seeing some good momentum. So, I guess, uh, uh, what, what else should we, should we talk about here before we wrap up? Austin, what have you, have you been having a good time in Austin? It is so great to be here in Austin. <laughs> it's I not love bad. Austin. It's great. It's a cool, cool town. It's a very cool town. That's my plug, you know, and if you vote for me for mayor, 
I promise free barbecue. <laughs> free barbecue for everybody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Elect Collier Mayor .com. Minimum in income for all Austinites <laughs> is a barbecue platter <laughs> once a week. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's a good platform. Yeah, that yeah. is a good platform. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Where, which barbecue place would you pick? Well, I mean, look, everyone says Franklin's is the best, and, you know, nobody wants to be like a bandwagon person, but it's actually the best. Okay, that's the Franklin's. thing. Okay. I mean, it really is the best, but, you know, uh, but I got to tell you who uh, the, the sleeper favorite for me is Opie's. They're actually out in Spicewood. Ah. So, you know, people probably won't make it all the way out there, but it's it's Opie's um, out, out near Lake Travis. And it's really incredible. Also, uh, Terry Black's is is one of the better places that doesn't have a line, but it's just really good. Right. So anyway, thanks for joining us on Barbecue Talk here at Super User <laughs> TV from Austin, Texas. Mark Collier and Alex Polby. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you.